Good evening and welcome. You're watching Left, Right and Center. I'm Nithi Razdan. The sedition debate is back and now it's playing out in Bangalore where the NGO Amnesty International has been booked for sedition after Azadi or pro-freedom slogans were allegedly raised at an event they organized on Kashmir over the weekend. The complaint was filed by the ABVP, the student wing of the RSS. The state, mind you, is ruled by the Congress party which went after the BJP on the misuse of the sedition law when JNU student leaders like Kanaya Kumar were also charged under the same act earlier this year. So the Congress has a lot to answer for on its hypocrisy on this issue. The state BJP chief Bayasya Dhirapa said today that patriotic people cannot tolerate anti-national slogans. Amnesty says the filing of the sedition case shows a lack of belief in fundamental rights. The question then is, is it justified for the government to book Amnesty International in this sedition case? Or is this another misuse of the law uh, as far as we know? Well, joining us tonight, uh, we have from the Congress Party, uh, Mr. Pawan Khera. Also joining us, uh, Mr. Sham Bhatt, President of the ABVP in Bangalore. Uh, Mr. Bhatt, let me ask you first, uh, what exactly about this event enraged you so much? It, the ABVP is the complainant in this case. What happened? Uh, uh, thank you, Nidhi. Good evening, everybody. And uh, we have uh, three points to discuss over here. A soft uh, city, what we call it as Kashmir of South India, and you suddenly find that it has become a target. People like Amnesty International to speak about, to speak against Indian Army or to organize such kind of uh, programs which questions the integrity and sovereignty of India, number one. And it was a provocative act. And uh, where was the respect for Indian Army when the program was conducted saying that Azadi Lenge Army say, Indian Army say. And it is highly demoralizing here. The village children, the students who come to the college, they, they dream every day of joining Indian Army to come with their flying colors over there, to think of the dream of uh, donning the uniforms over there. And suddenly we find that a group of people come here with provocative message that Indian Army say Lenge Azadi, what is this stands for? And coming to the point number three, sedition charges. Yes, unwillingly in a uh, community hall was misused. A program was conducted with around 30 to 40 people, not all, 30 to 40 specifically people. They went on talking about Azadi Chahiye for Kashmir. And when Kashmir is having 370 Act, a special status, and it is irrevocable and uncompromising situation of the constitution and how Amnesty International can allow Mr. Shah, people but to talk if, if, about Azadi. Okay, yes, I, I understand you. You know your anger at uh, certain slogans that may have been raised, and certain you have a right to feel offended by those. But as far as chanting Azadi slogans are concerned, I'm from Kashmir, and I can tell you that currently in Jammu and Kashmir, in the Kashmir Valley, there are thousands of people chanting Azadi slogans. Are you going to put all of them in jail for sedition? That would mean almost half of the it Kashmir is, Valley right now. So I am only asking, Madam, that are, two are, are the slogans threatening the very idea of India? They are just slogans. Do they really threaten the idea of India? Do they threaten this great country at the end of the day? Will you throw Nidhi, half of Kashmir is, uh, in jail? It is a very different case. It is a very different case. How? We have crossed the limits of freedom of expression. No. So, so uh, you would put Kashmiris in jail yeah. for sedition then, yes? That is what you are saying? It is not me. It is, a, it is a whole community. It is a state. It is a state what they have protested against with. No, I'm, I am asking, I am asking since medicine, you are so angry yeah. about the slogans and there are Kashmiris chanting those very slogans on the streets of Ka the Kashmir today, will, would you want to book them under Sedition mm -hmm. Act as well? It has, been, it has been a very systematic provocation that has happened in Bangalore, which is very new to this place. And it has happened, and suddenly there is a, uh, the student community is confused, and and totally we are against any question on Kashmir coming to this soft city and talking. You are not answering yes, my question on Kashmir, but Kashmir. but let me ask Pawan Khera about the Congress's hypocrisy. All of this year, we saw the Congress attacking the BJP on the issue of Kanahiya Kumar. What happened in JNU? The misuse of the sedition law over there, and now the Congress government in Karnataka has used the sedition law against an NGO for an event. How, what no, is this Nidhi, double speak? Is, let, let's be very clear about the law as it stands. In 2013, in the Lalita Kumari versus State of UP case in Supreme Court, it was a five judge um, bench, had um, passed an order saying that any cognizable f offense, the FIR has to be lodged. The police is duty bound, nothing to do with any government, any political party, the police is duty bound to first file an FIR investigations later. 
and let the investigations take place. There is no conclusion that there was sedition, uh, amnesty. I am sorry personally, I get very irritated with um, some of the stands amnesty takes, but that apart. Amnesty International was doing its, its mandate. Its mandate is to, to organize seminars, talk about human rights violations. They have a right to do that. It's their duty also. Fair enough. Now, so you're saying they're, the state government, channels, they're they're saying the state government didn't give a nod to this FIR or they didn't have there a is, choice? There is no, no provision in the law for the state government to give a nod or not give a nod. They have to register the case. The police case. is bound by law to first file an FIR pending investigation. That's, that's from 2013 onwards. You can ask your legal luminaries um, if they are here on the debate. And uh, any cognizable offense. But why do you have the Karnataka Home Ministers then saying that the, the intention and background of those involved will be investigated? You know, you have the state Congress leaders Absolutely. of Karnataka He's saying one thing and you have the central Congress leadership saying another. No, well, I don't see any, any dichotomy there. The issue is when, when he says it has to be investigated, there is a reason. The Supreme Court also says that however violent the verbal assault is, it will not amount to sedition unless it's backed by actions that, that create disorder. But that Let them investigate. Were there some actions? W were these words backed by an action, conspiracy? Let, let the investigations take place. What is the Congress's stand on the sedition? The Congress's stand on freedom of expression, first of all, is very, very clear and it's always been. It's sacrosanct. To the through the soul of democracy, and I this it can't be. The Congress has banned books in the past. You threw a cartoonist uh, in look, jail for sedition. We have been punished in the past for whatever we did in the past, and we have absolutely no no hesitation in saying it was wrong. So, so you're saying this is a course absolutely. correction. So, Biraj Patnaik yeah. of Amnesty International joins us. Biraj Patnaik, uh, Sham Bhatt of the ABVP in Bangalore that has filed this case against you all says that the. Army was being questioned, the integrity of the country, the sovereignty of India was being questioned. It was demoralizing uh, the kind of slogans that were being raised against the army. What is your version of things? Well, you know, we don't have to go by his version or my version. This event was not only recorded by Amnesty International, which the recording of which has been given to the police. Uh, the police on our request have recorded the event themselves. And what is the event about? If you look at the event, uh, you have a very eminent journalist, Seema Mustafa, who's a cell from army background, her father was in the armed forces, moderating a dialogue where you had victims of encounter killings by armed forces or disappearances. And you also had a Kashmiri Pandit representative, R.K. Mattu speaking. And then there was a music event. Uh, at one point, the music event uh, had to be cut short because the police permission that was, shot, uh, that was sought was till 8.30. And then some people got agitated, uh, ABVP people were protesting and raising slogans and then you know some youth inside raised the slogans. Now I don't want to get into a debate on whether the, the slogans were seditious, whether there was not, whether the call for Azadi seditious or not, that we are seeing the consequences in Kashmir of our Kashmir policy. So that's not something I want to comment on here. The fact of the matter is that if we want a solution to the Kashmir problem, this has to be by dialogue. And this is a dialogue that has been facilitated. Now you have a track record here of any dialogue that happens anywhere, which involves any dissent, you immediately slap sedition charges. You don't study the law on sedition. You don't read the Supreme Court judgments, read Kedarnath, where it's very clear, it's ex ex explicit that you ca a charge of sedition can only be made not if it disturbs if it is, the public order abs or Absolutely. If there is an and the problem is that violence. that that all political parties in the, in this country have unfortunately been guilty of misusing the sedition law in some form or the other yeah. dushan dave of I the supreme court is joining us and i i wanted to ask mr dave to to you know explain to us the finer point of the law mr dave do you think that this has been another example of misuse of the sedition law that it's been an overreach or is it justified <clears throat> Well, uh, uh, from the, f uh, the facts that are appearing and the videos that uh, whatever little one has been able to see, one has not seen everything, but it certainly is not, uh, you know, amounting to sedition because what really has happened is some kind of sloganeering, some kind of, you know, uh, shouting, some kind of, you know, claims for azadi and, you know, stuff like that. I, these words are not sufficient to constitute the offense of sedition. It's a very serious offense. And unless and until the words are accompanied by incitement to violence, actual violence, and, uh, you know, public disorder being, you know, damaged, unless and until that happens, the offense of sedition does not, you know, stand committed. 
So <clears throat> this has become very clear for last about 40 years from Kedarnath's judgment of the Supreme Court's constitution bench. That's the law of the land. Unfortunately, nobody wants to follow. What really is happening today, unfortunately, in Hindi is that there is a kind of a jingoism. And we as a nation are becoming extremely intolerant, are becoming overly patriotic, and we do not want any kind of a dissent against uh, you know, us, uh, our, our you know, majoritarian opinion. Now, yeah. which really is not what sedition law is about. And that's, I feel that today's case, uh, the police, I'm sure, will investigate and ultimately will file a report and the judges will do their work. But I don't think it is a case of sedition. Well, well uh, you've certainly articulated those views uh, very, very bluntly and frankly, Mr. Dave, as always. Uh, Mr. Aman Sinha of the BJP joins us. Aman Sinha, I'm just reading out to you what Rajnath Singh, the Home Minister, said in Parliament only months yes, earlier. When he said that uh, the government acknowledges that the defi definition of the sedition law is very wide and that, that is why the law commission was now going to uh, review this law. So the proposal is don't scrap it but review it because it's a very wide and vague definition which uh, has, has been prone to uh, misuse. Uh, how then, you know, how do you then justify in this case uh, the, the use of it? Do you really believe that slogans being shouted against India uh, amount to sedition? Do they really threaten this great country at the end of the day? Do slogans threaten this country? But Nidhi, as of now, Section 124A, which is sedition, is very much there in the statute book. There's a lot of eco in my EP. And, uh, you know, all the ingredients of the offence, in my opinion, were constituted because if publicly there is an unlawful assembly which uh, instigates people and shouts slogans of Azadi, anti-India slogans are being shouted, anti-army slogans are being shouted. So uh, clearly, you know, it is uh, it will tantamount to you know creating disaffection, ill will, and hatred not only against the government but against the country. If uh, someone were to criticise the government were to criticize any institution that was understandable but if clearly and you know without uh, without any ambiguity at all if P if there is an unlawful assembly which is saying azadi 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 then obviously the ingredients of section 124a will clearly be constituted and a fir has to be registered it's a cognizable offense my friend dushyant also knows it very well and therefore police will investigate Whosoever is guilty but or, Mr. you know, Sina, whatever be the details that, of the investigation, that, is, uh, that will emerge is later on. Is the country really but threatened? Opinion, is the institution uh, the, of the army really threatened time, by a bunch of people? Right Mr. Sinha, I am saying, I am asking 48. a different question. That is the army, yes, the institution of the army, the ins th this country, yes, uh, is our unity uh, and, and uh, is it really threatened by a bunch of people shouting slogans at a seminar in Bangalore, which frankly, most of us didn't even know was happening. Now we do because of this sedition case. So, is, is, are we so uh, fragile as a country Nidhi, that, that we are affected uh, by some people shouting slogans? The same question was asked during JNU as well. Nidhi, it's not a question of subjective opinion. If the statute book mandates that if such and such offence is, 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 you know, uh, is, is, uh, is committed somewhere, uh, then obviously FIR has to be registered. There cannot be two ways about it. No, the so point therefore, if somebody Amar, uh, by words spoken, by writing, uh, creates, you know, disaffection, so ill will against the country, and it cannot go anything win, beyond Azadi. So there so can be ingredients of the offense that can be considered. And, okay, and obviously the investigation to, will carry on. Uh, at Amnesty this point in time, Nidhi, let me point out, Nidhi, that at this point in time, perhaps no individual or organization has been named. Only a FIR has been registered for the purposes of conducting an investigation. 